as our return to normal territory is imminent on the new enlarged and revamped continent, the Scourge awaits for us. We have official book information that not only confirms that they're still running their facilities and creating a ton of new undead all the time, but they also still control a significant amount of territory with local warlords vying for power all the time. However, one warlord, a red lord warlord, the one that created them in the first place, is going to come in as the titans are coming in the last titan and he's going to mobilize all his pawns the legion the scourge and the light the old undead army is still powerful and completely aimless but not aimless for long imagine if you could be a part of an MMORPG creation process, if you could name an NPC, design a dungeon, design a quest, well, you can actually do that with Scars of Honor, the MMORPG that is truly being built by the community. I've known these guys because I featured this game on the channel in the past and they had really gone light years in development. I mean, they started with only a few really passionate people, then grew to a bigger and more robust team over the years. I mean, this is the type of passion that created original blizzard and you can actually now be a part of it and you can support them directly skies of honor is based on the world of argon a free to play mmorpg cross platform all about a community experience not a single player in an mmo setting you can go as far as naming an actual city in the game designing a dungeon with the team but even with the lowest pledge you can get your own name in the game credits so make sure to click the link in the description check out the kickstarter and help make skies of honor a reality and become a part of their community the Scourge has really been one of the most influential enemies really in all of Warcraft history and I would honestly say the most iconic one and despite the fact that from this perspective they were really not that big of a threat, I mean when you compare it to the Burning Legion or the Void Armies, they definitely felt like the most threatening army at least in my opinion and the most well developed one. The Scourge seems like the Scarlet Crusade, I mean it has been defeated over and over again but as you might have noticed with the Scarlets they managed to pull out a huge force out of them despite them being almost non-existent. With the Scourge though, this is a much more much stronger force and a force that has been confirmed to still be in large numbers up to the present day with the time skip and everything. To really understand the status of the Scourge you need to look at the formation and the mechanism how they really work as this is what really makes army super powerful. For example the only reason the Burning Legion was so devastating was because of the Argus machine mechanism and the fact that they were essentially mortal they would constantly come back while the undead could technically come back again through necromancy. It's really hard to kill an undead. Their main mechanism was how they just spread like wildfire. We have seen this first hand back in Warcraft 3 where one crazy guy with a few grain shipments and followers managed to overtake the entire town, to overtake the prince, to ultimately destroy the entirety of the northern eastern kingdoms in the span of like a few months. Keep in mind, the Scourge destroyed the entire kingdom of Lordaeron doing what the orcish army never could. They ravaged the entirety of Qual Talas, killing most of the high elves, what the Amani haven't managed to accomplish in thousands of years. The main reason for this success is the mechanism because the Scourge was fighting all the living so they would utilize civilians, they would transform entire towns into zombies and even defenders that fought them eventually turned. This is really what made them unstoppable. However, this is just the Eastern Kingdoms and that branch of the Scourge that has mainly been destroyed, the real power was and still is in Northern. What a lot of people had missed because most of this wasn't actually in the game and that is that the before Lordaeron invasion began and after Artus took over, Northern was constantly under attack by the Scourge, it was literally a Scourge upon the entire continent. The undead army managed to break the entire Nerubian Empire to turn them to their side, they destroyed a massive kingdom, they defeated resurrected dragons, they took the Vrykel under their control, pretty much all the native races to Northern were affected and that is what made them insanely powerful. However, that literally just explains the numbers. The thing about the Scourge was that it wasn't just raising goals and random civilians in huge numbers, it had entire facilities, advanced technology, machines that was literally creating monsters, gigantic flesh monstrosities that were the size of an entire zone, terrible stitched abominations, massive ice breeding dragons and they even went as far as to try and resurrect Galakrond. Now the reason I'm talking about all this backstory is because infrastructure like this cannot simply be broken, it is 
far too developed and despite a lot of people thinking the scourge is a thing of the past it isn't actually a thing of the past and we got actually information to prove it i'm not just speculating here so the first major defeat of the scourge was in the eastern kingdoms then most important one was when he defeated artis then boba came in and was only there to hold the scourge from not spilling everywhere after that savannah's broke the crown the scourge went crazy for a little bit was even controlled by the jailer and it did some damage but then it was subdued most if not all of their presence in the eastern kingdoms was vanquished but the powers in northern still remain in quite large numbers a little more than a year ago the book exploring azeroth northern was released this was an official book that was updating the state of northern after shadowlands and we got quite a bit of information on their status where they are and how they are after all this time still a thing Overall, it was said that after Zola has been slain and the Lich King was obviously no more as, well, the Zola kind of took over, the mightiest of the Scourge warlords vied for power, but it was never actually explained what happened to this power struggle. It was kind of left open-ended and I'm almost certain we're going to learn what happened when we go to Northern. The only thing we know is that one of the most powerful warlords of the Scourge, a Sandline Blood Elf, led a pretty big incursion into Quota Last. This is the quest line that happened at the end of Shadowlands and we did manage to defeat Oh, however, this was not the leader of the Scourge, this was just one Scourge faction controlled by a powerful warlord, but it is almost certain that the main big guys still remain in Northland. The Scourge has been confirmed to not only be active, but to mainly be aimless, both Shadowlands, but keep in mind, while they're aimless, they're not a brainless army. Sure, a large chunk of the undead are <laughs> quite literally brainless, but many powerful liches, lieutenants, sandline, necromancers, other intelligent form leaders of the Scourge still remain. I think Keltuzad, but not ruined by the Shadowlands lore, and they all had their own independent goals. While we're on the topic of Keltuzad, there was talk about Nextremus in the book, and how no one seems to be able to shoot this place down. The Alliance has tried multiple times to do it, but never could accomplish it, and Muradin, in particular, as keep in mind, this book is written from the perspective of the Bronzebeard Brothers in Northern, talks about how Muradin is worried that the Necropolis is waiting for something or someone. Now, the main center of the Scourge, Ice Crown is still filled to the brim with the undead. We know some of the main surrounding areas of the Ice Crown Citadel were actually taken over by the Ebon Blade and they control it, but it was said that the Citadel itself is still swarmed with the undead and it is terribly dangerous. Even more importantly, Flashworks is still active up to this day. If you remember back from Wrath, this was a giant facility dedicated to the creation of abominations, flash giants, other undead, and the book, both Shadowlands, a bit prior to Dragonflight, confirmed that the Flashworks is still producing undead at a slower rate but new undead are coming and they're expanding their numbers they're not actually losing numbers or falling apart the only thing is it isn't really done with a specific purpose but let me just tell you if we got this working and a certain person comes in and takes over he's got all the facilities to rebuild their numbers in no time and we'll get to that in a bit furthermore we got an update on the Argent tournament grounds and it was said that the place was remade into a place for the Argent crusade and any they want to continue to fight the scourge in northern the thing is though they're constantly actually being invaded by the scourge incursions are happening all the time and the only thing is that the undead are aimless so most of these invasions are not really all that dangerous there is not one huge coordinated attack now of course we have covered everything that blizzard has confirmed so far and we established some of the facts the scourge still remains in pretty large numbers their facilities still work they still got the machines to create new undead they're still making them and they have even taken over some areas while some ground has been lost but the main thing is that their leadership has been broken at least the main leadership and now they're kind of stuck with the various survival of warlords does this sound exactly like one other giant army that comes to mind well you guessed it the burning legion and i'm a firm believer that the same person is going to do, take control of both as both of these are connected and ruled by the same characters i made a full video on this if you want to check out the burning legion returning and the information but it is a similar giant army of demons that remains sergeras is imprisoned and they're ripe for someone else to take over the only thing i would say is that the demon army is actually Actually much larger much more ancient than the scourge and on average much more intelligent now check out one thing that connects both of them you guessed it 
the Dreadlords. Both the Burning Legion and the Scourge has been created by the Dreadlords and the Natrizim are right now more powerful than ever before and their leader is on the run as the Natrizim's ending was left open ended and he's finally close to accomplishing his master plan. Check at the end of the Shadowlands cinematic and remember what the Natrizim says. You could have chosen another way brother. Imagine what we could have accomplished together. Now I've already talked about this so I'm going to be as brief as possible. You already know about the Great Cycle, the six cosmological forces fighting each other yada yada and how the Natrizim is the one that is pushing the death realm. We believe the Jailer was like the main death guy just like how Sergeras was the main fell guy but the reality is that the Natrizim is really the brain behind the entire thing. He's really the one that is pulling all the strings. As we know by the current lore he essentially broke the Titan Pantheon by having his Dreadlords drive Sergeras crazy. Then his Dreadlords infiltrated the entire burning legion destroyed most of life together with the crazy titan and his crazy army then he broke the machine of death by infusing argus with death magic so not only did he defeat this order of the titans he also broke the machine of death and ultimately escaped himself now we have the world soul saga and we know the titans are coming to northrend in the last titan prior to that the void and the light will be turning azeroth into a battleground in midnight which essentially means every cosmological force is going to come for Azeroth in the next few years. Well, let's turn back to Animal Infiltration, the book from the Shadowlands. Apparently, Dreadlords have infiltrated life, they got a life agent, they have managed to infiltrate the Void Lords, and they got a light agent, which is almost obviously Lothraxian. Let's look back at the Scourge. Do you remember who created the Scourge? It was the Burning Legion with the Dreadlords. The Dreadlords personally made the Lich King in his armor, aka the Lich King that was connected directly to the Death Realm. As I said, in the other video, the Natrius has really set the ground up. He only now has to pick up the fruits of his labor. Remember, most of the brains of the Burning Legion had been the Dreadlords. They're still there. They're still with the demons. He can definitely mobilize this entire demon army through them and he can play with the light through the Traxian and the agents on the inside. However, Northrend is his home turf. The Scourge is his natural power. And if anyone is going to take control over them, it is going to be the Natrius. He's got the numbers there, the Dreadlords to be the main lieutenant and he's got the facilities to expand their numbers and to turn them into a significant threat once again. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think we are getting Lich King 2.0 and that the Scourge is going to be the main enemy like it was back in Wrath of the Lich King without this. Personally, I think the Natrius is going to manipulate the demons the most and use them in his main army, but I'm also almost certain the Scourge is definitely going to be a thing in Northrend in the last Titan. However, I do feel like the Titan forces will be the main enemies, the main threat. The Scourge is going to be like a side thing, something that he's going to use to set the ground for his plans as all the cosmological forces come for Azeroth. Thank you for watching, check out Zelotan and 10.2.6 by clicking on the screen and check out my video on ancient colonies in Spain by clicking on the screen as well. See you next time!